Ann Arbor and Detroit, Michigan, two well-known cities nestled in the southeastern region of the state. When passing through either of them, their 45-minute distance can be shocking. When comparing things like architecture or amenities, like public parks and pools, there's an obvious difference. Even grocery shopping is done differently. What about the schools that residing children will grow up in? Well, let's take a deeper look. This is Mumford High School. Located on the northwest side of Detroit, Samuel C. Mumford High School has a little over 1,000 attendees. According to Niche.com, only 67% of the student body reported feeling safe at school. Over 840 students receive free or reduced lunch due to the fact that the majority of families live below or near the poverty line. Common course offerings include vocal, dance, theater, visual arts, and some AP and honors classes, though only 2% of students choose to be involved. Athletics are district-wide, and students can choose between cross-country, track, swimming, basketball, baseball, or softball, though the school reports having low participation. Let's compare it to Skyline High School, the Ann Arbor High School we may or may not be familiar with. It's one of the top-ranking high schools in the state and one of the best for college prep. Standardized test scores are well above average, and the student body generally chooses to challenge themselves. Common course offerings include choir, band, orchestra, visual arts, more than 15 AP classes, A2 virtual online classes, and a nationally recognized magnet program. There are countless extracurricular options ranging from football to National Honor Society. Why does your range of opportunities vary depending on your zip code? We can attribute a part of this problem to systemic racism. Before trying to solve it, we must understand what it is. Let's go back in time. After the Civil War, the government divided cities into areas that were desirable and undesirable to investment companies. The separated areas were denied many public and private services while the outside areas were not. This process is called redlining. Redlining commonly segregated black neighborhoods. In the future, this caused black people to be denied loans to purchase homes and get a college education. A piece of these racist behaviors roots from implicit bias. Implicit bias is the predisposed attribution of qualities to a specific group. A portion of people believe that racist values are diminished, but recent research shows that these behaviors are still prevalent. A 2012 study from Ohio State University examined how treatment done by pediatricians is affected by implicit racial attitude. These doctors were more likely to prescribe white children painkillers than their black counterparts. This can be extremely harmful, especially in careers like healthcare and law enforcement. I'm going to pose a question. Why did this problem just recently begin making news headlines? It's not new. In fact, it's been going on for decades. In the 1950s, state government utilized force and power of the police as civil rights protests began. From 1963 to 1965, officers exerted force on demonstrators in forms of tear gas and police dogs during the Birmingham campaign. These actions were often televised. Tennessee v. Garner of 1985 and Graham v. Connor of 1989 constitutionally regulated the police. In 1991, Rodney King was beaten by LAPD, which led to six days of riots. In the early 2000s, the rise of social media allowed for awareness to be more widespread. In 2013, the Black Lives Matter movement was created to display the segregation towards African Americans by police. The movement spread awareness about the deaths of Eric Garner, Tamir Rice, and so many more. And only eight months ago, the death of George Floyd sparked an outrage as protests began in June 2020 that still occur today. These issues can be combated with unity. To form an alliance with equality, examine your privilege. Notice your personal biases. Call out racist actions from peers. Validate the experiences of people of color. Shop small black owned businesses. Do what you can to advocate for others. Be the change.